Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Loving God, for whom no door is closed, no heart is locked, draw us beyond our fears. Help us to see the wounds of Christ's body as the wounds of this world. Help us to love as you love, to heal the broken, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and all for your sake. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a greedy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 133. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. A reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, Concerning the word of life, this life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declared to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you 
so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, not for ours only, but for but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I tend to be an early riser. I'm up just before sunrise. A few days ago, the morning sky turned a vibrant crimson red. I thought, red sky in morning, sailors take warning. Have you heard that little saying? Here in the desert without oceans or lakes or sailors, that wisdom saying still holds meaning, I think, because later that day, strong winds blew in, the temperatures dropped, and it rained. The second half of the saying is red sky at night, sailor's delight. Just as glorious as the sunrises, we can also have stunning sunsets. Our readings today offer us a glimpse into the spiritual realm, into ideas of what God desires for creation. The first letter of John speaks in spiritual metaphors of light and dark. In this letter, light and dark are not physical realities. They are metaphors. To be in God's presence and live as God desires means that one is living with an awareness of God, and that awareness may feel like light, like sunlight, or like we can see our path. To not live in God's presence is to live in a kind of spiritual realm that is void of God, a realm where we might feel disconnected from other people and the things that we do, and the things that we value may be shallow compared to God's compassion love, and care. The gospel reading begins on Easter Day with Jesus, 
who has already revealed himself to Mary Magdalene and sent her on her way to share the good news, the profound love of God in the resurrection. Now Jesus appears to the disciples who are gathered in the upper room. And they're, you know, this is the day, a few days after the crucifixion. So they're gathered in the upper room with the doors closed and they're hiding. They're afraid. They're afraid that they too might be captured and crucified. And then all of a sudden Jesus appears. Even though Mary has already told them that she's seen him, they didn't believe her. And so now Jesus appears himself. The reading then moves forward an entire week. And Jesus appears again, this time to the disciples and to Thomas, who wasn't present the first time Jesus appeared in the room. What is really compelling in this reading is that Jesus cares enough to come back see, so that Thomas can see physical signs and touch physical signs of the resurrection himself. A sign of our growth and maturity as human beings, particularly when it comes to faith and a relationship with God, is our capacity to wonder, to ask questions, and to not be afraid of doubting. Doubting is the condition for wondering, for exploring, and for being open to something new. That's how we begin to move from the spiritual abyss to the spiritual realm of love and compassion. We begin by doubting. We doubt our current state of being and begin to wonder if there is something more. So Jesus shows up when we are in that state of doubting and wondering and points us along the path of God's love. Maybe you think, like I often do, that God has never shown up in my life or in your life because you haven't had an event as literal and remarkable as Jesus appearing to Mary Magdalene or the disciples. But remember, Mary did not recognize him at first, not until he said her name, and Thomas needed to touch his wounds. I always wonder how often has God appeared in my life and I missed it because God did not show up in a way that I expected. So how does God show up? In the gospel, God shows up as compassion, responding to the very human sense of doubt. God shows up in people, who are compassionate. Mary doubted because she thought that all was lost. Jesus assures her that all is not lost. God is with us. God shows up in people who are with us. Then Jesus shows up in the upper room to the disciples who have doubted Mary's accounting of seeing Jesus. Jesus shows up and speaks to them. Peace be with you. God shows up as a sense of peace when anxiety and fear are present. Then Jesus shows up to Thomas, who needs to see and touch signs before he believes. God shows up with signs of wonders, often through our own open wounds. In our woundedness, we're sometimes more able to see the signs of God's presence. In this gospel, Jesus wonders about people who will come to believe without needing signs and wonders. People who believe in the mystery of the resurrection without seeing any sign that it is so. What does resurrection look like to you? How do you experience God's love in your life and in the world? And then we have the reading from the Acts of the Apostles, which shows us a glimpse into what life looks like when people believe that God's love is real, that God's love is here and with us now. Mary Magdalene, the other woman, the apostles, the disciples, they didn't stay stunned or locked in the upper room. After a time to process what they had experienced, they went out into the world and shared the love of God. The love of God was so profound that it changed the world and still influences it today. We are at a juncture in Christianity, a time when something new is being revealed to us. Or maybe we're just beginning to see, have the capacity to see God in a new way. Regardless, the, the force of creative energy that God is revealing is one that focuses on who we are and how we are living examples of God's love in the world. Who are we as individuals? Who am I? Who are you? And who are we as a congregation? Who are we as people of faith living in this world? And what is our purpose in the world today? How am I? How are you? How are we living examples of God's resurrected love? Let us profess our faith 
with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Filled with joy on this royal feast of feasts, let us offer prayers to God who leads the people through the Red Sea waters. For the Holy Churches of God, Jennifer, our bishop, all bishops, priests, and deacons, for this holy gathering and for all the holy people of God. For the world and its leaders, our nation and its people, glory and praise to you, O living God. For those in need, the suffering and the oppressed, travelers and prisoners, the dying and the dead, for ourselves, our families, and those we love. That our Savior working in us may heal this broken world. Glory and praise to you, O living God. That with Christ we may overcome evil, restoring justice and compassion. That Christ may fill us with the joy and happiness of his holy resurrection that we may enter the chamber of the divine wedding feast and rejoice without limit with angels and saints. Glory and praise to you, O living God. Remembering Mary, your faithful disciple who birthed love into the world, remembering all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, for the gift of new life in your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear the prayers we offer this holy day, and grant that we who have received new life and baptism may live forever in the joy of the resurrection, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Let us pray. In union, O God, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May you be a new creation, Christ for those to whom Christ shall send you, and the blessing of God our Creator, Redeemer, and Giver of life be with you always. Amen. Mm -hmm.
into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love as God's love has been revealed to us in Jesus. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. <laughs>